Today on My Zero Sense, we talk about this, this, and this. Hmm. So the topic this time is an interesting point that was brought up at the previous company I used to work for. It was about the price of coffee. What? What the hell does this have to do with this? Whoa, 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 whoa. hold on to your friggin' chocobos. This is gaming related, I swear. Ish. Anyways, here's some context. If you work an 8 to 5 job, then you know what it's like waking up in the morning. The dreaded process of getting out of your cozy bed, getting ready in your half-asleep state, going to Tim Hort- uh, I mean your favorite coffee shop, and buying yourself the holy grail of drinks to jumpstart your day. Until you've had that coffee, everyone needs to stay the hell out of your way. So, remind me how much you pay for this coffee. A dollar? Two dollars? Maybe you buy yourself a fancy latte or an espresso for five dollars. Regardless, if this scenario sounds familiar to you, you most likely do it very often. Often enough that you could do this again relatively soon and not think twice about it. Alright, and now for some seemingly irrelevant context. Whether on the Apple App Store, the Android Play Store, or the Windows App Store, you'll find a ton of apps of any kind. Games, tools, entire software programs, etc, etc, etc. There's a vast number of applications you can look through and buy the ones that you want. Or, if you don't like spending, you can resort to only downloading the free ones. I mean, who likes to pay for an app these days anyway, am I right? Now, what I want to look at more directly is the vast number of games that cost between 99 cents to $5. Wait, isn't that the price of coffee every morning? So what the hell is up with that? Most of us get up in the morning and are willing to spend $2 on a cup of coffee every day, but when it comes to buying an app, be it a tool or a game for 99 cents, suddenly it's, whoa, I ain't touching that. I mean, when you think about it, a coffee, even taking into account how much caffeine affects you through the rest of the day, it will last a day at most. But a game application? Buy that and it's yours forever. And yet something in our mind places a wall between our index finger and that buy button. Let's put things into perspective. Imagine that instead of buying a coffee every weekday before going to work, you buy an app. With 5 weekdays per week and 52 weeks in a year, you have a total of 260 apps in a year. Holy jeez! 260 apps? That's a significant number of apps on a single mobile platform. Just think about it for a second. 260 coffees? Or 260 apps in a year? When I looked at it that way, it seemed logical to choose 260 apps that I can keep forever instead of 260 coffees that last me only the year. So why is it so damn hard to tap that stupid buy button? Well, I don't know the absolute reason, but here's what I think. If I tell you my shop sells a cup of coffee for $2, you know exactly what you're getting. A hot caffeinated drink that will wake you up and ease you into the day. It can be a latte, an espresso, whatever you fancy and have had numerous of times. And since coffee has been around for hundreds of years, everyone knows what they're getting for their $2. And let's face it, $2 to make sure someone doesn't get punched in the face on your way to work in the morning? I'll say that's worth it. But when it comes to an app, suddenly we're unsure of everything. You can argue that there's a description on the app page, you can argue that there may be a demo you can try first, you can even argue there's a rating system. But none of those really help you understand 100% what it is you're getting for your $2. It may be just pocket change, but nobody wants it to be a waste no matter what. Unless you're talking about an app that literally millions of people already own and use, like Facebook, chances are you won't hear about it very much, and you won't be inclined to buy it just because one or two people mentioned it to you. I mean, what is one or two people compared to the hundreds of people that you see buying coffee every morning? So what would it take to break that barrier, to break that ice of frozen uncertainty? I'm no expert, and I certainly won't pretend to be one, but what I can say is how I got to know of all the apps I've bought so far. All of them I bought because I heard about them from a friend who was already using it. They show me what the app does, why they use it, and if there's something I need or want, I buy it. Most of the time, I don't even bother with the free or demo version, even if there is one. In fact, I'm pretty sure that's exactly how I got into drinking coffee as well. All my friends start drinking coffee, they talk to me about how they need it in the morning, I give it a shot, and suddenly I'm a coffee drinker. Word of mouth is truly the way to go. 
Now, I'm not saying everyone is like that. Some of us are richer and probably wouldn't mind paying $2 for an app he's never tried. But I'm willing to bet most of you wouldn't think twice when you ask yourself, coffee? Or a random game on the App Store? Go ahead, try that the next time just before you buy yourself a coffee. I'd be curious to know how you react. Let me know with a comment in the section below. And I'm afraid that's all I have for now. If you enjoyed today's episode, hit that like button for some easy feedback. It doesn't seem like much, but every like helps me gauge what you guys liked and don't like. If you want to see more content like this, don't forget to click that subscribe button. And feel free to check out any other videos I have on my channel. Those were my zero cents, thanks again for watching, and always remember to keep it cool. See you guys next time. Oh, 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 oh.